I'd like to request everybody to please stand up and open our Bibles in Acts chapter 18. It's Acts chapter 18, verses 18 to 23. It's Acts chapter 18, verses 18 to 23. We'll all uh, read the verses all together. Are you there? Acts chapter 18, verses 18 to 23. Verse 18. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Sancheria, as he vowed a vow. And he came to Ephesus, and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue, and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not. But bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep his feast, this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you, if God will, and he sailed from Ephesus. And when he had landed at Caesarea, and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed, and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia, uh, in order strengthening all the disciples. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, O oh Lord, we thank you for your word, O oh Lord. We thank you for this time that you have given us to study your word, O oh Lord. We uh, praise you. We thank you for this opportunity, O oh Lord. Please uh, teach us something that we can apply in our lives and also uh, to strengthen us as Christians, O oh Lord. We thank you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Good afternoon once again. The title of our message for today, actually the lesson for today is Finishing Strong. This is already the 55th lesson from the book of Acts. Last week, uh, we learned about um, the lesson, Be Not Afraid. This was discussed by uh, Brother Bong. Be Not Afraid. Uh, this is an account of Apostle, Paul, uh, Apostle Paul's ministry in Corinth. We'll continue with that. We are now in uh, lesson number 55. And the title is Finishing Strong. Uh, when we study uh, chapter 18 of uh, Acts, uh, this is already uh, nearing the end of the second missionary journey of Apostle Paul. We've studied about the first missionary journey and then we went to the second missionary journey. Uh, last time we studied uh, that Paul was in Corinth and he stayed there for uh, 18 months or one and a half years. Uh, we will continue with that. And if we study, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, chapter 18, we have already uh, seen how Paul suffered in the ministry. Uh, the, 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 actually, the temptation uh, to quit was there. Uh, considering the, the trials, the problems, the tribulations, the persecutions that Apostle Paul experienced. Uh, actually, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 to 28, we can see the account here wherein Apostle Paul expressed uh, his um, his uh, um, issues about his ministry. Uh, it says here, of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often in perils of water, in perils of in perils of robbers in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, <clears throat> in weariness and painfulness, in, watching, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches. Actually, Apostle Paul had all the reasons to quit. You're considering all the things that he has experienced. However, he did not. Actually, he only not finished his course, but he finished it on a high note. What are the reasons why he was able to finish his course on a high note? That is what we will study uh, today. Our utmost diligence and services appear unworthy of notice when compared with the things that the Apostle Paul experienced. 
our difficulties, our trials, you know, it cannot be compared to what Apostle Paul has already experienced. <clears throat> Paul strictly keep to the faith. He keep to the truth. And he always refer the glory to God. You know, whatever he has accomplished, because, you know, he is a spiritual giant. He has accomplished a lot of things. He has turned the world upside down. You can see how many souls were converted because of his ministry, and yet, he said, it is not of his own, but of God. He gave all the glory to God, and, and he, he actually um, uh, considered himself as nothing, as nothing. And yet, if you see and study his life, he is a giant, you know. I think uh, nothing is comparable to him, even in our days today. Uh, the, his passion, his faith, the, the things that he has done for the Lord, is, I think, uh, is not comparable to the experiences of any leader of today. <clears throat> so there are three essentials of finishing strong. This is what we will study today. Number one, in your notes, is his love at Corinth. Love at Corinth. In verse 18, it mentioned here that <clears throat> having shorn his head in Centraea. Centraea is a port in Corinth. It was located at the Aegean Sea on the east side of Naro uh, Isthmus on which Corinth was located. Um, actually, it was mentioned again in this, uh, as the site of the church in Romans chapter 16, verse 1. We have to remember that Apostle Paul uh, stayed in Corinth for 18 months, as I mentioned earlier. So that's one and a half years. Apparently, the Jews' opposition has been squelched. <clears throat> While Paul was in Corinth, he assumed a Nazarite vow. We can see here in uh, verse uh, 18, having shorn, shorn his head in Centraea, meaning, or he cut his hair. <clears throat> he assumed a Nazarite vow. We can see uh, the account of a Nazarite in Numbers chapter 6, verse 1 to 21, uh, which was an Old Testament act of thanksgiving or of dedication to God. During the period of the vow, the devotee allowed his hair to grow, and at the end of the period, he cut his hair. So when he was about to leave uh, Corinth, he already cut his hair. That means he has finished his vow. <clears throat> It is common for the Jews to make such vows to God as an expression of gratitude or devotion to His service when they have been raised up from sickness or delivered from danger or calamity. So this is what they do. They make a vow to God. Actually, they are not allowed to drink anything from the vine. Okay? And they are not allowed to cut their hair until their vow is finished. Apostle Paul may have been taken a Jewish vow so that he might appease more of the Jewish population and thus able to help them believe in the Lord Jesus Christ more readily. This is his way of showing the Jewish people that he still respects their uh, old traditions without disrespecting the law of God, which was given to him. But this is his, his, probably his expression of uh, love for the Jews so that they would be able to direct their eyes and their spiritual hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> uh, letter A in your notes, they grew in their relationship, relationships together because of the love of the ministry. Because of the love of Apostle Paul in the ministry. We can see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1-4, to it says here, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes our brother, and to the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours, <coughs> grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God always for, on your behalf, for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. We can see that the Apostle Paul really loved the ministry. He, 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 the love that he has for the Corinthian people is always there. <clears throat> um, it's only because of the grace of God. 
Because it's very difficult to love somebody that is not your relative. Amen? Very difficult. Or it, it is very difficult to love somebody who has not given uh, favors to you. Amen? Only by the grace of God that we are able to love somebody even if we are not expecting anything in return from them. Right. Only by the grace of God. And we can see this in the life of Apostle Paul. He was very concerned about the status of the believers in Corinth. And also, they grew in the relationship because of the labor of the ministry. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it had been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and of Cephas, and I of Christ. Christ divided, was Paul crucified for you? Or we, were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that, that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. We can see here the, the labor of Apostle Paul. He was the one who established the church in Corinth. And there was division in the church. There was division in the church. And he was saying to uh, the believers in Corinth that they should be united. Because they are the fruit of Apostle Paul's labor. <clears throat> the relationship grew. You know, the relationship Apostle Paul grew uh, because of his love for the ministry and because of his labor. He has done so much. Uh, that's why the love and the relationship prospered because of that. We can also see that they grew in the relationship with the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9, God is faithful by whom ye are called unto fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Apostle Paul loved his people. He tried without fail to reach them with or for the gospel. He's always trying to reach out. You know, I always remember Pastor John. He always tried to reach out to everybody. You know, no matter how huge the church is now, he still knows what is happening in every single member of the church. This is how we can compare the love of Apostle Paul to the churches he established. He tried without fail to reach them with or for the gospel. The great wickedness of Corinth did not stop Paul from loving the people of Corinth. We can see, you, you know, the account in Corinthians that the believers there are very carnal. carnal. You know, they're not spiritual, and yet, Paul still loved them. Why? Because it is prompted by the love of God for him. Because God loved us, even if we are all sinners. Amen? The Lord Jesus Christ died for us, even if we are sinners. That's why the love that the Apostle Paul has for the Corinthian church is so great, because of the love of the Lord that he has for him. Same is true with us. We should love our brethren, amen? We should love our brethren because that is how the Lord loves them. And also that's how the Lord loves us. <clears throat> the great wickedness of Corinth did not stop Paul from loving the people of Corinth. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15, it says, And I will verily gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. You know, um, Paul did not respect any person. He loved the current people uh, with their flaws and with their strengths. In Acts chapter 10 verse 34, the Lord said, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. This is how the Lord sees us. No matter what we do, even if we do bad things, He still loves us. The love will not waver. That is how the Lord wants us to love also. That is how the Lord wants to love us also. God did not love us because we were good or lovable. Amen? He did not love us because we are good or lovable. He loved us because He is good and we were needy. 
The fact that people are, unlo are unlovely does not give us the license to ignore or mistreat them. So if we have visitors, try to express our love to them by giving concern, by saying hi to them, by smiling at them, and making them feel welcome in this church. Amen? This is how we should act. This is how Apostle Paul act. He did not respect any person. No matter who you are, the love will still be there. <clears throat> so, we see the first point, his love of his love at Corinth. And then, point number two, his leadership at Ephesus. In verse 19, And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. You know that Ephesus is a large city, you know, Western in Western Asia Minor. It's a huge city. It was the largest city of the Roman province of Asia Minor, actually. It was not the capital, though the Roman governor lived there. It was a commercial center because of its excellent natural harbor. So you can see that this is a city like Doha. Doha is a city. Nairobi is a city, you know. It was a free city which allowed it to have local government and much freedom, including no garrison of Roman soldiers. And Paul stayed in the city for more than three years. He stayed in this city for more than three years. We can see that account in Acts chapter 18, verse 18, and also Acts chapter 20, verse 13. <coughs> Excuse me. Tradition asserts that it became John's home after Mary's death in Palestine. <clears throat> Actually, it takes spiritual leadership and attentiveness to properly steward God's blessing. Actually, uh, we can see that Apostle Paul um, showed his spiritual leadership in the, in the church in Ephesus by his preaching. By his preaching. Paul reasoned with them, which means he gave a reckoning or he gave an account. He always preached the gospel to them no matter what. He was able to uh, establish a church in Ephesus and make it grow because of his preaching, because he is preaching the truth. You know, I remember when I joined BBC, there were about 20 or 30 people only, including children. Uh, that the first time I attended church was February 4 of 19, uh, 2011. Back in uh, PS, P, PSIQ. Philippine School International. Philippine, Philippine International School of Qatar. PISQ. We were around 20. 20 or 30 including children. We were occupying one small room in the... In the in, uh, in the school and there, there's another room for the children uh, but after a few years look at the church now it has grown people have been blessed people have been saved and they have left the church and joined another church in somewhere else the, the church has been blessed why? because the word of God has been preached here and is being preached here that is the, 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 the secret of Apostle Paul in establishing church. He just preached the gospel and he preached the truth. Paul continued this pattern of preaching of the gospel everywhere he went. The church at Ephesus would become one of the great churches of the first century, later pastored by John, then by Timothy. From the beginning, the pattern for this church was set. They were focused on preaching the Word of God. Any church that is not focused will sooner or later drift away from the truth. Do you agree? If you are not focused in preaching what is true, then it will drift away from the truth. So we should, be, we should always be standing on the truth. And what is the truth? It is the Word of God, which is true. Amen? This is the reason why the, the ministry of Apostle Paul was blessed because he is true in preaching the Word of God. Not only that, he is true in delegating also. In delegating. Paul did not just leave the church to fend for itself. 
the people asked her to get back to Jerusalem for a feast. Even though he was leaving, he delegated authority to leaders to guide the church and to ensure that it, it continued on the right path. I think Brian Baptist Church is doing the right thing also. Because uh, Pastor John is away and yet we still have the services. We have uh, preachers like uh, Brother Joseph, teachers like Brother Arman who continue to preach the Word of God even if Pastor John is not. Amen? Amen. This is the secret of all Apostle Paul. He continued to preach what is true and also he knows how to delegate. He knows how to delegate. This is the secret because they're saying that you cannot be considered a successful leader if you are not able to develop successful successors. Amen? Not only successors, but successful successors. You should be able to train people well so that when you leave, somebody will take care of your place. This is the secret of true leadership. To be able to develop successors. Good and successful successors. So that's point number two. <clears throat> we learn about his love and then his leadership. And then number three, his labor from Antioch. In verse 20 to 23, it says, When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. But I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia, uh, in order strengthening all the disciples. We can see here that Apostle Paul reported to his home church. He reported to his own church. Jerusalem was the one who sent him. Amen. He was the one. Uh, Jerusalem was the one who commissioned him for his uh, missionary journey, and he reported back to his own church. After the missionary journey, Paul also did the same thing. Paul went to Jerusalem for the feast and saluted the church. He then returned to Antioch to share with the people there that what God had done on his latest trip. The principle of accountability that we see here is very important. There is always a responsibility on the things that we are doing, amen? There's always a responsibility. When churches support missionaries, they should expect to hear what is being accomplished and the missionaries should be also eager in reporting of the good things that God has done for them on the field. This is very important so that you know, people who are who are supporting the missionaries can be encouraged also to continue to support them. That's why every Sunday we read uh, letters from missionaries because this is a responsibility of the missionaries to update us on what is happening in the mission field so that we are also edified and um, <clears throat> encouraged. Amen? Amen? A, he reports to his own church and then he strengthened the disciples. This is the beginning of the third missionary journey of Apostle Paul. He edified and confirmed the converts. Other trip, other than his trip to Jerusalem, Paul has a very orderly approach to visiting the church. He made sure that he visits the churches and communicate with them. This is very important. To be able to edify them, to be able to strengthen them, to be able to encourage them to be able to correct them and also to be able to uh, encourage them to continue in their faith. Because this is what's important for every believer to continue with their faith, strengthen their faith and grow in the Lord. This is what Apostle Paul has done. <clears throat> we can see his love, we can see his leadership, we can see his labor. And this is not only true for a leader, it is also true for all of us. Our love for the brethren should always be there. Our love for the ministry. Our love for our leaders. And also, we should also be leaders in our own rights. For, for parents, you should be leaders in your homes. Amen? 
for Bible study leaders, you are leader in your own core group. For those who are elders and deacons, you are leaders in church. We all have responsibility in preaching what is true, in preaching what is right, in preaching the Word of God and preaching the Gospel. And also we should labor. Amen? It is our responsibility not only to our leaders but also to God. We are accountable for what we do, we are accountable in what we say, and we are accountable in what we think. Every Christian needs love, leadership, and labor. Just as Paul worked with the converts in the new churches, we need to be laboring to disciple converts who come into our churches. Amen? In, who come to our church. Abandoning baby Christian is a horrible abdication or abandonment of responsibility. It is our responsibility to guide others. That's why we need to take care of our testimony so that others can be led through our examples. Amen? Amen. Our love, our labor, our leadership are very important for us to be able to encourage others also to love, also to lead, and also to labor for the Lord. Amen? Amen? I hope you learned something today. Any questions? Any questions? If there are no more questions, I'd like to call um, who's leading the prayer, Brother Jimmy and Cheta, to lead us in the help the needy offering, and then Brother Paul and Paul to lead us in our closing hymn, and then Brother Sam to close us in prayer. Thank you very much for listening.